Facts don't care about your feelings. Facts don't care about your feelings. These are facts. To get into some things kind of more in your neck of the woods, uh, I have been following what's going on with the Chicago public schools. And for the uh, for the audience, I'll give a brief overview, but I want to hear your thoughts. Basically, uh, the Chicago Teachers Union said that they were not going to go in for in-person classes. They voted on it like 80 plus percent agreed. A lot of the teachers themselves had COVID, which played a big part in it. And um, the Chicago school district, Chicago Public Schools, canceled classes totally, not just like not even allowing online teaching kind of to strike back because they didn't like that the teachers weren't coming in. Basically being like, if you're not in person, then you're not even going to teach online and you're not going to get paid. You living in Illinois, um, you still live in Illinois, correct? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm like an hour outside Chicago or a little less. Okay, so what has the news been like about this in the local area? Because it has turned into national news. And um, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I mean, um, I had some friends in Chicago Public Schools, and they are freaking out, and they really don't want to go because it's really bad right now. A bit, a big part of the problem is that the mayor is uh, creating all these is creating all these insane guidelines for them being in school. It's like, it's very hands off. In fact, even the governor, J.B. Pritzker, they've been saying he's been trying to support the teachers and the union. It, well, it's really technically not the union. They're not like technically going on strike, but the, they say that the governors would try to help, but he's being obstructed by the mayor. It's been insane. And a lot of the people around where I'm at, it's pretty split, the support of the teachers. I think because a lot of people want their kids to be in school so they can go back to work. They see it as free daycare, essentially. My mother is also a public school teacher. Um, she teaches near Rockford, which is another bigger city uh, near Chicago. And they are also talking about doing like a sick out, all the, having all the teachers call in sick. But um, yeah, I mean, ultimately, so like I get why people want children in schools it the especially like elementary schools and stuff the quality of learning is not so good it's really difficult to get sixth graders or sorry excuse me six-year-olds to be on zoom and all that and you know do remote learning but the alternative is because this is what people don't understand it's like oh we need people in schools the alternative is all their teachers are constantly out sick half the class is out sick so it's like there's really you know, nobody wants there to be a pandemic going on. It's obviously not an ideal uh, environment for learning. But I, in my opinion, I mean, it's better for them to go remote. And and ultimately, it, my opinion is not as important as that's what the teachers want to do, at least for the month of January. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at my work, they like they basically took away COVID pay because we were getting three dollars an extra an hour, and then for just the month of January, they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna give it back for a month because it's like really bad right now." Um, oh, bad. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I mean, I like in a in a way, I do get it. Like, I am very thankful that I don't have kids right now, but um. At the other, on the other hand, like, um, do people perceive it over there as kind of like a overreaction from the school district to like basically like be like, oh, if you're not in person, you're not going to teach online, or um, like, do are people seeing that as like a, a punitive choice by the school district, or are they kind of blaming the teachers for that? Oh, I think it's definitely the blame is going on the teachers, especially because the local government has been made it very clear that they are not on the side of the teachers. I was laughing. I think I posted this online that um, my mom, who has, you know, they're they're public school teachers. They're all like women in their 50s or whatever. They're all like most of them are pretty liberal. And my mom's friends were calling and being like, 
I cannot believe that CN, what CNN is saying about these teachers, like, it's not very supportive. And it's like, well, no shit. I mean, the media has the same interests as a lot of these local politicians. And that is, in order to keep the economy going, we need these kids in schools for our state-sanctioned daycare. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I mean, uh, the the CNN really does just follow the leader when it comes to COVID stuff. Like, the next day after the CDC was like, oh, you only need to quarantine for five days, they were like, they had their talking points printed off and were basically talking a, uh, about that decision positively well almost universally their viewership were like that seems bad a little bit of a dissidence there <laughs> yes but again i mean it's it's obvious the reason why that they would be against something like that right their their interests are to keep the machine grinding and the only way to do and you know public schools are play a really important role in that and i think that covid has you know i mean these problems with the way our we have structured public education and the, you know how much we invest in public education these were problems long before covid of course but covid has really revealed like the stress that we put on school and like the the role that we think about school it's just it's just revealed all these cracks in the foundation there. Yeah, and I mean, to be honest, even though I think remote teaching would obviously be the best thing right now, like, I know that myself, like, I've taken online classes when I was in college. Also, at my job, they have some, like, um, like learning activities or like things that they, you sit in for like an hour or two that used to be in person, but now that you do them over Zoom for the most part. And I just cannot retain anything, not a single iota of shit when uh, I'm listening to something on Zoom. I know, I totally agree. <laughs> and and I just, I actually just finished my bachelor's degree real recently. I think I said it last time I was on here. And um, the last year was all uh, during COVID and it was all online. And I was apprehensive about it because I have uh, traditionally not been super into the online courses. I, I, for me personally, I need to be in the environment. That's when I put my switch on and been learning in school mode. <laughs> yep. And I, but it is a little different for public schools of course uh but but at the same time the elementary school kids i know especially the younger kids it's really difficult to get them to stay on a computer for six hours that some of them don't even know how to use the computer yeah like first graders and stuff yeah <laughs> and and they're finding actually i mean there is evidence they are far behind in reading and a lot of that stuff but again the alternative is people getting sick. So, you know, it, it's a, it's a, it's definitely a really difficult situation for all involved. But I think that the teachers are the people who are in the classrooms. They are the most informed about what's going on and theirs is the judgment we should be trusting, not necessarily the the people uh, dictating, uh, you know, the people in local government dictating what they do. Meet the guy. Who, me? Van Wilder. Wilder. Van Wilder. G-L-A-D to meet you. Who puts the cool yeah. back into school.